The two month pause gave them extra time to grow and develop. You could see all that hard work pay off last Saturday when they defeated Kindy North Huron to get to the state championships. Julia Ayrault has been a huge help to that duo as well. Her improvement started with their team trainer Anna after struggles with injuries her freshman year. The order is supposed to be lifted on Friday. Now if the governor pushes things back, then the MHSAA will make a new winter plan. But if all goes well, teams can get together starting Saturday. Rocket has taken that big leap that coach Izzo talked about with his players from their freshman to sophomore years. He's currently averaging 13.6 points and 4.2 assists per game on the road and here at home. Doctors from both schools got together and made the decision that this was the best course of action. Now coach Cole doesn't want the team to look at this in a negative way, but instead come back tomorrow and hit the restart button. After spending three seasons at Penn State, she entered the transfer portal and was signed by Michigan State in April. As a Waverly High School grad, she's happy to be back in the mid-mitten. Mental health is not always easy to talk about, even for people in the spotlight. There was fear of losing my job, not being able to coach, and obviously fear of my health. Joanne was diagnosed at age 30. She had two episodes during her first coaching stint at Maine. Her family recognized it, but she kept it a secret from the team. They didn't know until I had to miss practice. I was out for two weeks um, getting treatment, and there was a lot of conjecture and guesswork at that point because I wasn't at practice, um, but it was not clear. She was a successful coach at three schools, Maine, Michigan State, and Duke, with a 646 to 255 coaching record. She was also a mother of two and a wife. There were a lot of roles to play, all while keeping her health, to herself. And that was on purpose, uh, very concerned, scared, trying to get me a doctor, trying to get me appropriate treatment, trying to get me on board, uh, fighting very hard to get through the day, still uh, obviously still working, but you know, just enjoying my coaching as an escape, but at the same time coming home, not sleeping, uh, dealing with the same issue. And so I, I continued through my work uh, to a point and then I was hospitalized. She kept asking herself, why me, a successful athlete and coach? You cannot believe that your mind has decided to take its own path and operate differently. And at no point did I ever think that my mind could get away from me in that manner. She finally became comfortable with it and felt she had the platform to share the news when she took the Spartans to the national championship. But she was counseled to wait, and at the time, she wrote her feelings down. I found a note that said, can I tell my story now? Is it time? I was, I sometimes, you know, I write in the mornings and have morning time and sometimes ask myself these kinds of questions. And I felt very eager um, to do it. When the pandemic hit and she left Duke in July, she knew this was the time to share her story through her new book, Secret Warrior. I think it's a book about loyalty. I think it's a book about education for mental health and particularly bipolar. And I'm just very, very fortunate. I've had fabulous doctors, wonderful friends, and an opportunity to lead a very balanced life. And I'd like to share it. This book chronicles her personal journey. And as she says, the warriors that are all part of this. In East Lansing, Natalie Kerwin, News 10. It's fourth and 10, Michigan State. Smoker across the middle. He's got Hager on the run. We're going to go. They take it. Inside the 30. Touchdown, Michigan State. You may recognize number two, who scored this touchdown in the Spartans' win over Notre Dame in 2000. Herb Haygood is still around the game 20 years later. I thought, you know, going into college, you know, give me a great opportunity to, uh, to coach. Herb was a wide receiver for Michigan State and played in the NFL. He's coached all across the state of Michigan, most recently at Eastern, and now he's at Madonna, where he's had roles as a defensive and offensive coordinator. It was just announced he's taking the reins as the interim head coach. It was an easy transition to make and an easy decision for the administration um, just to elevate me to head coach. This is where it all started, Spartan Stadium, the place where Herb knew he wanted to become a head coach. Being a student teacher in the weight room with Coach Manning, having an um, opportunity to be around my coach, Coach Treadwell and Coach D'Antonio, has, you know, just taught me, to, you know, about the relationships of the park. This is Madonna's first year with a football team. Starting a program and creating a culture isn't an easy task. For most people, it's been the COVID situation. We're originally supposed to start 
uh, here in August be our first season. Everything has been pushed back to February, so we're working towards that. But what attracted him in the first place was the leadership and his ability to teach. The first and most important thing is that we have to teach our young men to be successful. You know, they're still 17, 18, 19 year old kids. The first year was a practice season, but come this spring, the Crusaders will take the turf for the first time as a program with Herb as their head coach. It feels amazing and just what I'm looking for that we put a good product on the field. In East Lansing, Natalie Kerwin, News 10 Sports.